Joining me now is a UFC lightweight contender who takes on Paul the Irish Dragon Felder at UFC 223 in Brooklyn, New York on April 7th. It is none other than Ragin' Al Iaquinta back on the program for the first time in a long time. Al, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Really, really appreciate you taking the appreciate time. It. Now, what we're mostly going to discuss is your new uh, recent involvement in Project Spearhead, of course, the latest uh, union, unionization effort launched by UFC women's bandweight Leslie Smith. Also, uh, interim vice president Cajun Johnson is now involved as well. You are the interim secretary and treasurer. Firstly, how did you get involved? Did you reach out to Leslie and just say, I am willing to put my face out there and, and take the spot? Or how did that come together? Uh, you know, I I listened to her on Ariel Helani's show and just the things she was saying, um, you know, really I took to heart. I felt she's, it's, it's a good time for this now. Is It really is just a, it, it's something that needs to happen. It's happened in every other sport, and it's something that needs to be done in you know in the UFC. Um, I signed the card and I sent it over to her. Uh, she reached out to me, and she uh, actually I, I know I, I I just texted her and I said you know if there's any way I can help, um, I definitely you know would be interested in helping out in any way possible and. Um, it, one thing led to another, and here we are. Uh, you know, I'm helping helping the cause and trying to bring all the fighters together to, you know, get done what should have been done a long time ago. I think uh, there was an, an article I read uh, where the UFC defense against paying the fighters was that we didn't have any. It was kind of a slap in the face, you know. So I think they, they're telling us we need one. We should be telling ourselves we need one, you know. Why did you decide to go out on the forefront and, and put your face out there and, and and make your support of Project Spearhead public? Because as you said, you could have just signed the authorization card, which you did, and that's still being helpful. That's still, you know, one of the 150 cards needed to go to the NLRB and, and go to step number two. Why did you ultimately want to put your face out there and, and take an executive role? Is it simply you're just a leader at heart and, and that's sort of who you are? I definitely think I'm uh, uh, somewhat of a leader at heart, I guess. Um, but on the other hand, I really just, I, I don't know why I wouldn't put it out there. I mean, it's, I'm, from what it sounds like, I'm, I'm kind of protected. Um, in in that I mean really what it, it it doesn't make a difference they're not gonna if I if I fight well I fight well then I you know if I'm a if I'm an asset to them I'm gonna be an asset to them whether I'm doing this or not you know so I don't think it's not the kind of thing where they're gonna cut me on a loss or whatever just because of this you know um I, I think everyone knows where we're at everyone knows that this is long overdue and it's just uh it's it's the first step in the process to uh just making it right you know Leslie Smith told me about a week ago that uh, she is one of the only fighters in her contract to have a, a bit of a condition sort of protecting her from basically what, what she, according to her anyways, and it could be worded a bit differently or, or anything, but she said that the UFC can't cut her because of her organiza uh, organization effort. So if she's part of the Project Spearhead, the UFC can't cut her legally because of that or MMA, FA or anything. Uh, do you happen to have something like that as well? You know, I don't even i I don't have anything. I would guess uh, uh, different than any other fighter in regards to that. Um, I didn't request anything when I had when I signed a new contract. So I would guess the wording is the same as every other fighter, whether you know whether it is in there or not. I don't really know. Do I really care? No. Um, I, if it, I'm just you know, it, that that it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me. I'm I'm taking this thing one fight at a time at this point. Um, I'm doing other things as well. I'm not. I don't have my. I don't have all my eggs in this UFC basket anymore. It's it's proven to be a mistake. 
uh, in my career, so I'll never do that again. Um, but should this thing turn out well and we kind of get a little more bargaining power, I think that, you know, it, it's something that could happen in the future, but I'm, uh, I'm just enjoying the process. And I think this is something that I'll enjoy doing. I'll enjoy uh, helping. Uh, Leslie Smith is really going above and beyond to make this happen. And I think, you know, I filled out my cards and I'm, I'm, I'm asking other fighters to fill out theirs. And she's doing this for all the fighters and I'm doing it for all the fighters. I'm not, you know, I think, uh, I think that Cajun Johnson is doing it for all the fighters. I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing, and I think people's people's hearts are in the right places, and uh, I, th- I don't see why it shouldn't turn out good for everybody. You know, you said that you're not concerned about getting cut or or losing your job with the UFC because of your involvement with the Project Spearhead, you know, a, a unionization effort. Is that simply because you're top ten at lightweight in the in the most stacked division? You're a popular fighter. The UFC doesn't. I mean, ultimately, they don't need you. You know, they have 500 fighters on the roster. It's a huge roster. But you 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 know, I mean, having you on the roster, it doesn't hurt. Do you think that's why you're you're not too concerned about that because you're a, a fairly popular fighter? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm on a I'm on a, a try fight win streak. Um, I'm ranked up there, but if I lose one, you know, I think, I don't think that's going to change if, if, you know, if anything were to happen and, uh, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't cut me on one loss. They wouldn't cut me on a win. Uh, they are going to need me as, as long as they need me. And, you know, I, I kind of know how they work at this point. And if I'm of value to them, they'll keep me around. And if I'm not, they won't. It's, I don't think a, 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 a affiliation with this um, with Project Spearhead is going to make any difference to them. You know. And considering uh, you, you've already said a certain amount of stuff about the UFC, where if they really didn't want you in the UFC, you, they probably wouldn't have re-signed the the deal just recently. Yeah, no, I did. Um, you know, they're I'm kind of in my in a lot of ways. I'm like the worst nightmare. You know. I'm, I'm a top ten guy that doesn't need them, you know. I'm doing this because I like fighting, and now they're paying me enough to where I can do what I like doing and not have to worry about, uh, you know, I don't have to kiss their ass. I don't have to um, beg for things. If if I get hurt in a fight and I need surgery, I can pay for it now. I don't have to beg them to pay for it, you know, and worry about you know, being on their time schedule of when they're going to pay for it and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's, that's, that's where I'm at, you know. What will your role, uh, as the interim treasurer and secretary be? Do you know yet, considering you were just added to the executive board pretty recently? Yeah, no, we're, we're going to have to do, uh, we're doing a conference call. We're going to have to, you know, get everything straight now, but I think, um, you know, definitely helping, to as all of us are doing is getting these cards signed by everybody and then um, also do, doing some fundraising stuff raising money for the uh, raising money for the group and I have some ideas and we're gonna have to again talk about it and I know they have a lot of plans and stuff like that I'm kind of just jumping in here new so I don't want to overstep what they've already been working on, you know what I mean? So uh, we're, we're going to talk more about it, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. Have you talked to either Leslie Cajun, Lucas Middlebrook, or, or all three of them yet? And if so, what were your early reactions? Or is this going to be, this conference call going to be the first time? Uh, I haven't spoken to them. We're in like a group uh, group message. We're group, group kind of chat. And they welcomed me on, and I kind of explained to them why I was coming on, and they're happy to have me, and they see that my heart's in the right place. I see their heart's in the right place, and I think we're coming together for a, for a bigger cause, you know. 
Were you at all hesitant about coming on board just because there has been failed attempts in the past? We've seen the Professional Fighters Association with uh, Jeff Boris sort of just go nowhere. The Mixed Martial Arts Athletes Association, that's the one where TJ Dillashaw, GSP, Tim Kennedy, uh, Kane, and I, I, a couple others were all on board. That was the one with Bjorn Rebney. That didn't work out. We've seen a couple attempts just in the past one or two years. Were you concerned or hesitant about joining Project Spearhead because who knows it you know we we think it'll succeed it seems to have a bit more promise but you never know uh this one seems the reason I jumped really on this one and really got behind it it, it just seems like um Leslie and Cajun have been really pushing for this for a while and this is I think I, th- I know Lucas Middlebrook uh spoken with him a few times and uh i i just know where their head's at i feel like it's a good uh it's a good starting point this is you know it's um it just feels more authentic it feels good if it's a it has a good feeling to it and i i think i think that they're this is the this is the first step to getting this done and i think that they just you know need the right people to to get behind it and i think i'll I'll start and hopefully more will come and join and we can get this thing going you know have you talked to any other fighters that have been willing to be on this executive board as well you know i haven't i haven't talked to too many about joining the board i'm uh i've reached out to a few about signing cards and once I get the cards back, then maybe we'll see where it goes from there. But I'm just, you know, I'm worried about getting really explaining to them uh, why I why I joined and why, the, you know, the first step is getting these cards signed and right. then bringing them on afterwards, you know. Fair enough. What is it going to be like or, or already like working with uh, fellow Ragin fighter Cajun Johnson? Obviously, you guys have had your fair share of words in the past, uh, fairly recently, actually, probably within a year or two. Uh, what, what's that going to be like? He, obviously, he's talked about fighting you, all of that. You guys haven't seemed to love each other, but now you're on the same side. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we end up fighting and... Uh... We have a little more bargaining power. We'll both get paid a lot more. You know what I mean? I think a common, a common goal can bring two uh, two foes together. We can get our job. We can get this done, and then if we want to fight, we can fight afterwards. But I think this is bigger. This is bigger than than that right now. Let's move away from Project Spearhead for a little bit and talk about Paul Felder. You're, of course, taking uh, him on at UFC 223 on April 7th in Brooklyn. Uh, do you like the matchup? I know it was supposed to happen last December. You pulled out of that fight. Uh, do are are you a fan of this fight? Are you looking forward to it? Oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think it's a great fight for me. I think uh, it was. I thought it was a great fight for me back then. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now it's in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's got all the makings of a, a great night. Can you clarify what happened a couple months ago? Some said you were hurt. Some said you didn't want to fight because your contract still wasn't very good. What? What? Can you clarify what? Why was the reason that fight didn't happen? I'm always hurt. We're always hurt. We're fighters. So I was hurt, and for the amount of money that it was, I was. I the hurt. The hurt to pay ratio wasn't in my favor. So now the hurt to pay ratio is in my favor, <laughs> and now the fight goes on. You know. What what do you feel like you do better than Paul Felder? Where are your main advantages? Obviously, if I ask you, are you better everywhere, you're probably going to say yes because you have to have confidence in yourself as a pro fighter. But what, where are your biggest advantages? Oh, we could. I think I think I have a lot of advantages over him. I mean, he's very tough. I'm going to try to use that against him. Um, he's uh, let's see, man. Um, like uh, I, I'm definitely more well-rounded. I can guarantee you, he's never not spent one percent of the time I've spent on a wrestling mat that he has. Um, I think my hand. I think he's he knows the combinations he's going to throw a second or two before he throws them. I think I pick things up in an instant and react, and uh, you know, I I act and react to what he's doing doing and. 
and I kind of call it on the fly. I've been doing this for so long, and I think my hands are so much quicker. You know, he's got powerful kicks, but they they come. He's not really setting them up. He's. I tell you what he what he does do is he he um he he sets up his spinning stuff. He's got some good spinning stuff. He's got some hard kicks. He's got. He times elbows good when people come in uh, from the outside, and he times his knee, he times knees well. But that can all be easily counteracted with, you know, a few things. There's a few things I'm going to do. That I think are going to change the change the the way that this fight goes, and it's going to be a good good night for me. I've watched his tape. I've seen the guys that he does good against, and what they do. I've seen the guys that he he struggles with and what they do, and I think he's just him. He's, he's not really doing anything different. He's getting a little bit better on the ground with his ground and pound. I don't really plan on being on the bottom, but if I am, I have plenty of stuff that no one's seen. That's the other thing. I've seen him fight his last three fights in the last year. He hasn't seen me fight in a year, and what he has seen was 50-something seconds, you know, and then it was two years before that, so... He's seen he's seen 50 seconds of the last four years of my training. Um, I don't think he has any clue what I what I'm capable of. I've seen everything he does. I've seen the last three guys he's fought. Um, he's fought guys that you know were good, but then you know he hasn't fought anybody recently on my level, and he's never beat anyone recently. He's never in his life beat anyone on you know on my level. Um, I've been in there with guys that are as tough or tougher than him and I've come away with the wins. So, um, uh, it's a tough fight. It's a tough, you know, he's, he's a tough guy, but you know, I'm, I, I'm just looking forward to the, the, the second that I hit him and he gets all tough and walks forward to me with his hands down. Uh, he does see him do that in every fight and I, I lick my lips like, I will love if he does that. You know, he Ross Pearson hit him with, a, with a, like a left hook, and he was like, "Oh!" And he put his hands down. He kind of like walked forward. And Ross Pearson, uh, I don't know what he did. Kind of like froze. I was like, "Yeah, you try that against me. That would be fun." Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so your current contract with the UFC, it's a one fight deal, correct? For me, in my eyes, it is a one fight deal. Yes. Okay, you say in your eyes, does that mean that you're just, you're, you're taking this fight by fight, of course, but you actually have more than one yeah. fight on your deal? Uh, uh yeah, there's, okay. it's a four fight, it's a four fight deal. Um, I don't, I actually don't even really know what we ended up, um, what like the increment, increments are or whatever. I kind of was just like, I told my manager, it doesn't matter, I'm we're taking this one fight at a time, you know. I'll sit out for it. it, it I'm just worried about this fight. I'm not worried about anything else. So after you, you say you get past Paul Felder, you win a fight. You you win the fight, I should say. Uh, what comes next? You of course have three fights left under the contract. You haven't stayed super active, as we all know. You fought Jorge Masvidal April 2015, came back last April, two years later against Diego Sanchez, won early by knockout. Uh, you of course have your real estate business going on. You don't need to fight, as you already mentioned. Uh, what comes after this fight? Does it really determine what the UFC wants, or because you do have those three fights, are you probably going to honor that contract? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna. I have a. There's a couple of houses that I'm going to be listing in in the end of April coming up, and then I'm going to Costa Rica with my girlfriend for my birthday uh, at the end of April. And we'll see. I don't know if if uh, you know. I'm not really looking past this fight. I'm just I'm looking, I'm looking to fight and then enjoy my birthday. And if if um, if we can make something work, if we, I you know I'm not I'm not really. It, it all depends on this fight. Whatever happens this fight, then we'll go from there. You know what I mean. Fair enough. Uh, the main event of the card you're uh, fighting Felder on, of course, the highly anticipated interim slash undisputed lightweight title fight. We don't really know what it's for, but it's still going to be a good fight. Khabib Nurmagomedov taking on Tony Ferguson. Just because it's on your card on the same night as you're fighting Felder, what is your prediction for that fight? Uh, Khabib doesn't make weight. 
raging out hops in there last minute and wins the <laughs> title, knocking out Ke- Ferguson in uh, spectacular fashion in front of his hometown in Brooklyn. <sighs> no, Good answer. Uh, Good answer. <laughs> that you know, you can you can always dream. Um, uh, I think I think Khabib is just he's uh, on a different level, you know. I think I think he's going to take it. So, how is the real estate business going? It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. I had uh, I had a rough month last month. Uh, I had three deals die, and uh, one literally, one literally, you know, passed away. So that was kind of tough. Uh, so um, trying to rebound from a tough month, but uh, we'll see. It's, it's I got some good good things coming down the pipeline, so I'm looking forward to rebounding. You know, I had uh, a tough tough month, but these things happen. I had I, I had to go uh, go into the office, and and my broker and mentor Rich from Home Smart Realty pulled me off the ledge. I was I was uh, you know have, get, getting a little frustrated with myself, but he told me these things happen. You gotta, you know, just learn from it and move on. They, none, none of the, none of the, these things were my fault. Um, it was just circumstances that I couldn't control, and the deals died, and commissions went other other places. So it is what it is. But uh, no, I'm doing good. I'm still learning. I'm learning every day. I've got uh, one house that should be closing pretty soon. Um, that I put a lot of work into. It was actually a for sale by owner. Uh, Vinny was trying to sell his house on his own after having it listed with uh, another agency. They they didn't do their job, didn't get it sold, and he was he hated real estate agents. He was never going to sign with another agent because he got locked into a long term contract with an agent that didn't do their job. So I said, Vinny, you know, listen, let me just give me thirty days to try to sell it. Only thirty day contract, nothing long term. We'll have a handshake if you see what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing you know, we'll, we'll extend it. And he was like, all right, he kind of liked the, you know, I kind of gave him the, the UFC spiel. Like, I worked hard. I'm the top 10 in the world. Why would you want to listen with me? So he agreed to it. And we ended up getting his house an accepted offer and um, a bunch of nonsense. He has an illegal pool or a, it's getting variances on it now. So it was a long process. I learned a lot and it should be closing somewhat soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Keeping my fingers crossed, everything keep, continues to go smoothly with it, and uh, you know, I'll be happy when that's done because that was a, that that would be a big feather in my cap to get that one done. And you're talking about Vinnie Michael Hayes, right? I wish I would. Hey, if he wants to sell his house too, come on, I can get his house done. But no, this is Vinny. Vinny, I don't know his list. I forget it. But uh, Vinny down in Island Park. We're getting we're getting houses sold in Island Park and. It's a really beautiful house. I'm glad that he trusted in me to get it done, and I, you know, I proved to him that I'm worthy of, uh, you know, I'm worthy of, of. Uh, I, I did what I said I could do, and that's all. That's all that matters, you know. Have you sold any uh, houses of fighters? No, no. Uh, I sold, no. I haven't sold any uh, fighters' houses. No. Okay. Um, you know, a couple of people from the gym, a couple of people from the gym. Uh, that's you know, that's basically my my sphere of influence is people people around the gym, people around my hometown. Um, and I'm lucky. I know a lot. I've been I've been to a lot of gyms, and I've been you know, I've met a lot of people, and they see the my work ethic. They see how hard I work. So when I tell them I, I can sell their house, they believe me, and they see that uh, you know. I'm a st- I'm a stand up person. I do what I say I can do. I'm I'm uh, trustworthy in in that aspect. Um, so I think uh, I'll just keep continuing what I'm doing, and it's uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for me. I enjoy it. I think some sort of ho- House Hunters with Al TV show HGTV in the future, starring you, Al Quint. I, I I think that that can go far. What do you think? Ah, uh, there's there's uh. There's been some talks about it, and uh, that would be awesome. That would be great. Yeah, I've got a couple of things. There's some some people interested in doing some stuff like that. Aljamain Aljamain Sterling, my uh, 
my teammate and uh, and roommate are uh, we, we uh, he does he flips houses. He, he just got done flipping a house in uh, in Arizona. So we're we're working on some projects here on Long Island. And there's some people interested in filming it and kind of putting together a reel, and we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. Raging and Funk Master sell houses. Musty TV. Right. <laughs> it, it would be interesting for sure. Definitely. Uh, th- there is that one guy that used to be a fighter, uh, Bristol Morande, I think his name is. Yeah, he's, he's doing really good out there in Vegas. He's, he's killing it. He is. You know, I, I, don't, I don't watch I watch him a little bit. It's a little too... Uh, no, no. reality like, TV like. Yeah, but I, you know, I watch it every now and then. I'll put it on and and just kind of it's brainless, you know, mindless TV where you just kind of enjoy what it for it for what it is. But yeah, it, it's definitely. I wish it was that easy. They make it look. They make it. It seems very. Uh, it seems like there's no stress involved when they're doing it when. When it's uh, when it's real life, it seems a little more stressful. And when your money's on the line and, and stuff like that, it's uh, it's a little it's a little more real, you know. Have you been to the Performance Institute yet? And if so, what did you think about it? I was the only time I was there was when I um, when they had that retreat, the athletes retreat. Um, it looked cool. I I mean. I don't really, I don't know. I still don't really understand. I don't really, I don't know. I don't understand why. I mean, I wish they would just. I don't know. Is it like Team UFC? I, I, you know, I don't. Like, I would rather they, that was a lot of money. I wish they would just have given it to the fighters, and you know, we can kind of choose our own like training places. I've found. Um, place in Staten Island that I use that's, I'm going to say, has uh, just as good equipment, you know, so I'm back, I'm at, I'm at home where I feel comfortable, I'm not in Vegas where I'm, you know, in a new place with different, you know, I mean, I got my coaches, I've got my team, I go to, I go to sports science lab in Staten Island three days a week, I drive an hour you know, into Staten Island from Long Island. It's a little far, but it's it's home. You know what I mean? I don't have to go to Vegas and like well, I don't get like they're doing the training camp in Vegas. But who's who's their trainers and like where are they train? I, it doesn't really. I don't. I don't get it. Um, and what happens if your part your train your opponent's going to be there? It's like everyone like hanging out together. Like what? I don't know. I just never. I don't. I I have my team, you know, and my team's Ray Longo, Matt Serra, and these guys those, that have been there the whole time. I'm not I'm not leaving and going to Vegas for for training, you know. I don't I don't know what the whole I don't know what's behind that. I don't know why they're doing that. But it seems like they maybe they're keeping an eye on everybody, see how everyone like works out, and see who's hurt, see who's you know who does good in training? I mean that guy that uh, the heavier was out there. You know, it seemed like he didn't really fight too well. Uh, Are you Francis Ngannou? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he. I mean, I did. They have like a wrestling coach there at the at the institute. I think with the coaches, you need to bring your own, and so. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't see Ray Longo. He's got a family and kids and stuff. I don't see him. I mean, I, that would probably not, it probably doesn't work too well for me. You know, maybe yeah, if I might, it's definitely you know. not an ideal situation for everybody. I mean, if if you live in Vegas, great, but if you're far away, it it's not. You can't go there all the time and make it work really because plane tickets. Yeah, cost no. Money. Yeah, no. It'd be great if if I could like you know get some extra money to pay my trainers more, you know. They're the ones that really deserve it, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's, there. you know, there'll be people, that I, there's people that benefit from it, I'm sure, but I'm just, I don't see myself. It'd be, it'd be tough for me to go out there when I have a whole life back at home, you know. I'm, I'm doing the real estate thing and, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, they, I don't know, I don't understand it, but maybe it's the other guys that do and they get it. I don't, I don't. The reason I asked you about the Performance Institute was mainly um, just to put a real estate twist on it. I, I don't think you do commercial real estate. Real estate. Feel free to clarify if you actually do, but I, I would assume you'd focus mostly on just houses. But what? Uh, so you've been there one time. You said for the athlete retreat back in May of last year. Can you give me an estimate? Like, okay, so they put fourteen million in it. What, what's the value on the market? Can you can you even think of a number? Just out of curiosity. You know, that's. No, I couldn't do that because I don't know the Vegas <laughs> market that well. I know, but, you know, I'm sure if it was on Long Island, it'd be way more expensive. They'd have to pay way more taxes on it. Vegas is a little different story. But, again, that's, you know, commercial real estate something I've dabbled a little bit in, but I have never, I've, uh, you know, just starting to kind of get into it a little bit, but not, I couldn't I couldn't go into, like, their financials with the build, with the with their building and whatnot, what it's worth, I, I don't know. But I'm thinking that it, the 14 million number is the equipment that's gone into it. I'm, I'm sure they have some really high tech uh, pieces of equipment as far as the training goes, and I, I don't know what the, you know, they, I'm, I don't know if they, they, they bought the building, they built the building, they built it themselves, right? I don't, I don't know. As far I as I know, yeah. It. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't put any numbers on anything. Well, Al, thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate you, uh, you, you, you know, you agreeing to the interview and and catching up with me. I it was fun. Sorry for keeping you a little while, but there was a lot to talk about. Certainly. Um, last question for you: UFC two twenty three. You're taking on Paul Felder, Brooklyn, New York, April seventh. How do you get the job done? I get it done, man. That's how. That's it. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get it done. I'm going to try to make it look easy. I'm going to try to make it look effortless, but if it's not, I'm going to be ready for an all-out war. So however it, however it comes, I'll be ready. All righty, Al. Thank you very much for the time. Before I let you go, remind my audience where they can find you on social media if they're not already following you, and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. I would uh, like to thank Sports Science Lab in Staten Island. Again, those guys have been behind me the whole way. Ray Longo. Matt Serra, uh, American Ethanol has been a sponsor of mine that helped me through a lot of tough times and stuck by me the whole way. So definitely give a shout out to them. You can find me on Twitter at Ally Aquinta, Instagram at Ally Aquinta, uh, on the World Wide Web at HomeKnockout.com. That's all I. That's all I got.